The government introduced a mandate back in the construction strategy in 2011, specifically looking at targeting cost efficiencies, programme efficiencies, and looking at the whole life cycle of buildings. And the government mandate was for level two BIM to be achievable for projects post April 2016. BIM is 3D modelling, plus behavioural changes and process development, which allows people to better understand the project right from the design process, through construction and into operation of an asset. In a very fragmented traditional industry like the construction industry, it was important that we see the opportunity to enhance the process of how do we deliver projects. The silo culture needed to end. The biggest challenge about implementing BIM is that we have many different organisations and parties involved that all have to collaborate and exchange data and so you have to get everyone signed up to the same processes and the same understanding of what good looks like and then you also have to get the client to understand what is it they want out of the process. At Leeds we looked at BIM as how to improve our process delivery and our starting point was if this is a project that we are managing on behalf of a client how do we get the best briefing for them? How do we best get them to understand their project? And how do we reduce their risk? We put work into the research and development as to how we could create toolkits to help our own people to upskill them and to ultimately upskill our clients so they could understand Level 2 BIM and the benefits of it for their projects. So this is the landing page that when you come and first look at Frame and it explains all of the processes around it and that's the position where you could come and get access to the project initially. Frame is comprised of um, an app that sits on your phone or on your mobile device and it also sits on a web platform so it's accessible wherever you want to use it and it is a tool that we can sit with the client or the project team and work through those key aspects of BIM and its implementation. So just running through briefly to show you some of the highlights. This is the dashboard that shows you what is the progress of each of the projects, how the project team are undertaking their tasks. And we've split it into briefing stage, right. design, construction okay. and operation. One of the benefits of BIM is to help us deliver projects with more certainty of time and cost and really reduce risk. And an app like Frame, which is developed by Gleeds, will give us more clarity of what's been delivered within the BIM context and allow you know, a quite a detailed level of tasks to be understood. Frame allows us to capture data that is around the asset of the building. If we collect the right asset information at the beginning, then when we come to the first year and the third year, we can do what's called a soft landings assessment. And that allows us to look at how that building's performed and what it's going to do in the future and how to correct it. What people see as a challenge uh, implementing BIM, I think is initial cost and the unknowns of how are we going to cope with the change. But I have seen many organisations that have decided to implement BIM that they are in a position they can see the value and they're not prepared to go back to traditional work. One of the encouragements that we're seeing with Frame is its adoption internationally and that is being taken up by commercial clients who are looking for just general efficiencies in their projects. We've been really encouraged too to see government trade missions that are going out there selling the benefits of the UK approach to construction using Frame as a demonstration project for Digital Britain. A big part of BIM is actually the information angle, helping people to better understand their assets, their industries and their estates. And future developments will continue to look at data. Um, machine learning is a large part of that aspect. And just actually understanding better our built assets. Interestingly, construction is the second least digitalised industry in the UK and the opportunities as we move forward to make the most of that data to drive efficiencies is going to be a really exciting part of the construction industry.